You've just got to love the Mavic Mini from DJI, but people keep losing them and crashing them. Why? Well, probably because they're not following our top tips on how not to lose your Mavic Mini. Hi, I'm Ashwin Droning On, and unlike its big heavy brother, the Mavic Mini from DJI is only 249 grams, it's much lighter, and it's nowhere near as powerful. And therefore, people keep losing them, either in flyaways or just flying in conditions that are not suited for this little drone. If you enjoy this content, then hit subscribe. But in the meantime, we'll get onto the tips on how not to lose your beloved Mavic Mini. Tip one, now this is very obvious for many seasoned drone operators, but calibrate your compass and IMU. You don't need to do this on every single flight, but if you're flying somewhere new, or if you get a warning on the screen, don't ignore it, because the compass and the IMU tell your drone what it's doing, which direction it's facing, and a whole lot more. And essentially, if those sensors fail, your drone will fly away. It only takes a minute to do it, and especially if you're flying somewhere absolutely new that you've not flown before, it's definitely worth recalibrating even if you don't get a warning, because it just gives you peace of mind. And in addition, if for some reason something goes wrong with your drone and you have to take it back to the store or raise a warranty request with DJI, showing that you've calibrated the IMU and Compass before that issue can help you massively. The next one, get DJI Care Refresh. Now, this is a really good scheme by DJI, a link is in the video description below, and it will replace your drone if you fly it off and crash it into a tree, even if it's by accident. Now, it shouldn't give you any false confidence. You should still know how to fly a drone without crashing it, but at least it gives you that safeguard that if you do happen to have an incident, DJI will replace it for you. Now this is a common one for new drone operators. You'll find that the first thing they want to do when they unbox their brand new drone is fly it in the house. And that's perhaps the worst thing that you can do as a new drone operator, especially before you're aware of all the sensors and the way that the drone responds to the controls. However, there's one thing you can fit to avoid getting into trouble. I hate them, but they're prop guards. Effectively, they're little plastic surrounds that go around the props. And if you do happen to bounce the drone into a wall, the plastic prop guards hit the wall first and that can generally save your drone and stop it from being destroyed. Prop guards are not good generally and you should only really use them indoors but if you are insistent on flying indoors because you're on lockdown because of quarantine then they might be a lifesaver for you. Now here's a really important one. Don't start flying unless your batteries are fully charged because when your batteries start to reach the end of their capacity the power available does drop. Not massively, but just enough which could stop you from getting your drone home. If you've already flown once on a battery and it's perhaps 50%, just don't risk flying again because despite the long flight time of the Mavic Mini, that flight percentage of the battery is an estimation. It's not necessarily absolutely accurate. You may find that you take off with a battery that says 50%, but all of a sudden it says just 20. And that can be because of many factors such as temperature and altitude. The next one relates to prop guards as well. Don't use them outdoors. By fitting a big plastic cage around it, not only are you making this little drone heavier, but you're also reducing its efficiency in the air. And this drone is already at the maximum of its power capability because of weight saving. By fitting more things to it, you're making it less capable, and when you do get in trouble up there outside, you're gonna be less able to get it back. In addition, the plastic prop guards are not aerodynamic, and by fitting it to your drone, you reduce the speed and reduce the flight time. That's not good. This next one is essential. Before you fly, check the wind speed. And you can download apps for this, such as UAV Forecast, but if the winds exceed the maximum permitted wind capabilities for this drone, which are 28 kilometers per hour, which is about 17 miles per hour, and more importantly, if the gusts exceed that, then you should not fly. Personally, I would even go as far as to say take 50% off those figures from the DJI specifications, just as a safeguard. 
We've seen some commentators saying, well, there was no wind, but I still lost my drone. Well, remember, the wind down at ground level will be very different to the wind up there at 120 meters. Not that you should be flying this little drone that high, because it is tiny, it's like a butterfly flying at 120 meters. That little butterfly is going to get blown around and it may not get back home. So that's a really, really important one. Not just the wind at the ground level, but also the gusts up at the altitude that you intend to be flying at. The next one relates to wind again. When you are about to fly, check the wind direction. And remember there's things called wind shear, which means that the direction of the wind down at ground level can be the opposite or 90 degrees to the wind direction up at the altitude you'll be flying at. So verify the wind direction and make sure that you position yourself so that you fly into the wind at the beginning of your flight. When you're ready to return, you should then be flying back with the wind and that will massively help you. Many of the issues we've seen with the Mavic Mini have involved people flying with the wind at the beginning of the flight, and when they're ready to return, they're flying against the wind, which means that this little drone is really struggling and it's already towards the end of its battery capacity and they end up losing it. So just again to qualify, when you start your flight, the direction you fly your drone in should be into the wind. When you return at the end of your flight, you should be flying with the wind, that potentially alone will save your drone. That rhymes. The next one, make sure that the props of your Mavic Mini are not bent or clearly distorted because that can cause them to impact the body of the drone or to lose a prop entirely. There are some reports that the packaging of the Mavic Mini does actually contribute to distorting the props if you don't pack the drone in that box properly. In addition, storage cases can also bend and distort props, so just make sure they're in a really good shape and condition before you take off. The next very important one is return to home. Now, if you get into a scenario where you're lost, you don't know where the drone is and you're struggling to get it back, you might want to press that return to home button. And if you do, you want to make sure that the return to home altitude is correct. When you press return to home, the first thing the drone does is ascend to the altitude that you've set in the app. And the reason it does that is because before flying forwards, backwards, left or right to come back to you, it needs to make sure that it's going to clear any buildings or trees that might be in the way. For that reason, before you start your flight, you need to know what's around you and the altitude of it. So I know that in this area, there are buildings that are about 100 meters tall. For that reason, I would set my return to home altitude probably to 110, just to make sure I've got sufficient clearance to get over it. You must do this before every flight, because every area will have different obstacles. Now, do remember that just for this little thing to ascend even 50 meters, will use quite a bit of battery power. So it's important that when you fly the next time, you adjust your return altitude accordingly. Because if you're flying in a beach with no obstacles at all, it's a waste of valuable battery life to be ascending 50 meters unnecessarily. And that could result in you losing your drone if that ascent uses a load of battery. The next one is satellite acquisition. Now, when you turn on your Mavic Mini, the first thing it does is launch its GPS chipset to look at the sky and locate all of the satellites that this little drone uses to work out where it is in the world. The accuracy of GPS is down to a meter or so. And for that reason, it's important that it acquires as many satellites as it can to then triangulate and compute exactly precise location. This advice only applies to when you're outdoors because indoors satellite GPS acquisition is not really going to be viable. But when you're outdoors, don't take off until you've got at least 11 satellites because that will give you peace of mind, it will give you decent accuracy and it means that your home point can be set properly. Now here's a good tip if you're not used to flying drones. When you first launch it, you might find that the controls are very, very sensitive and that it flies very, very quickly. That can result in you crashing it into objects or even yourself. So I'd strongly suggest that the first thing you do is change the drone to Cine Smooth mode. You can access this setting by pressing the little button top left of the app and there you can toggle between Sport, Cine Smooth and P mode. Cine Smooth reduces the movement by about half, so it means that rather than the drone going like this, <laughs> it will go like this. And that makes it much easier to manage, and especially when the drone is facing you, a lot of new drone operators will lose orientation and control, but with it moving much more slowly, it's far easier to learn. 
Don't take it out of cine smooth mode until you are completely proficient with flying the drone without looking at the screen of the app. You should be able to fly that drone perfectly just by looking at it. Now this one's very important and it's emphasized even by DJI in their instruction manual. Whenever you need to change the blade on a prop, don't just change one of the blades, change both because the blades in the spare packets are matched and weight balanced. If you just replace one blade, you risk the props being unbalanced and that again can cause your drone to come out of the sky. The props on the Mavic Mini are one of my dislikes, unfortunately. I wish this drone had quick release props and so we didn't have to faff around with single blades. But hey, it is what it is and it's there because of the weight. And here's the last tip which relates to wind again and it's very important. If you're trying to get your drone home and you find on the map or visually that it's just not moving because you've miscalculated the wind, switch it to sports mode. In P and Cine Smooth mode, the drone will only tilt perhaps this much. Whereas when you switch it to sports mode, the drone tilts much more, which means it can fly much faster. So if you're trying to penetrate through wind, this angle may just allow the drone to hover on the spot to counter the wind. But to beat the wind, you need more angle of attack and more speed. That's exactly what sports mode does. Again, you can access sports mode by tapping on the P in the top left hand corner and switching it to S mode. And that could just save you from getting your drone back. So there you go, that's our rundown of the top 10 tips to avoid losing the Mavic Mini, which is a lovely little drone. But you've got to be careful with it because it's not as heavy as this thing and it's certainly not as powerful, but it certainly is very capable. Comment below with your thoughts on this video, but most importantly, share this video because I'm tired of reading of poor owners losing their Mavic Minis and I really don't want to see that again. These tips could save one of the fellow members of a drone group that you're in. So share this video now. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you just don't like my face and hit subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.